Coincidentally, we had scheduled Sean McVay, the head coach of the Rams, to come on. I just broke some news about his center, Brian Allen, testing positive for the coronavirus. Uh, with that, we bring in the aforementioned coach, Sean McVay. How are you, big guy? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Jay? I'm doing great, brother. So, you know, before we get into some football news, let's get into some real life news here. Again, your center, I talked to him this morning, Brian Allen, told me he had tested positive now. It's going on three weeks. What was your reaction when you found out? Well, I think the first thing was, number one, you just want to make sure that you're doing all the necessary steps to, you know, identify, okay, how are you feeling health-wise? And then are we making sure that everybody else is aware of what he's been exposed to? And, you know, the thing is, I talked to him yesterday as well. I'm really glad to hear that he's feeling good, he's healthy, uh, and he's on, he's on the road to recovery because I think we all understand the, the, you know, the severity of what this has meant for some people. Fortunately for Brian, he's on the road to recovery. And I think he did a great job of letting us know right away so we could be timely in our response and making sure that, you know, we didn't expose anybody else to that. And that's a real credit to Brian and Reggie Scott and Casey Batten and, and all the people that were involved. Right, Reggie is your head trainer. And from what I understand, players are still allowed at their facility uh, for physical therapy when they're coming off an injury, right? So that's essential. Um but you guys, Brian told me, is your all that then once he tested positive, everything had to shut down there at your facility? Yeah, and that was a, that was a great response by our guys, Jay, because what you want to make sure is, all right, if he had been there, we're not leaving anybody else susceptible to, to some of the things as far as being able to catch it because it is potentially spread airborne and um, and it can be asymptomatic where it really, you know, you know, kind of sneaks up on you, if you will. So we close the facilities down for the last couple of weeks. This will represent being smart, being safe as we can about it and being able to open it up uh, starting next week where those guys that are on rehab programs only have the availability to get some of the treatment. But we're going to be real specific in segmenting it so that there's still the social distancing where guys are far apart and really breaking it up throughout the day because it's a really small group of guys, Jay. Uh, so we're being as smart and as sound with our decision making, you know, while being able to kind of carry on as close as you can with with some of those rehab players. Well, we're talking about physical di physical distancing. You're opening up your uh, offseason workout programs now virtually. How odd is that for you? Yeah, it's it's different, but. I mean, how odd is it that we're sitting here doing a Zoom interview? And, you know, I, I think we all have to adjust and adapt and think you're getting pretty proficient, you know, uh, being able to operate with the different technologies that we have. And for our coaching staff, it's been good. And, you know, everybody else has to do, to do the same thing. So let's see if we can make it an edge for ourselves. All right. This past week, you traded one of your receivers, Brandon Cooks, the Houston Texans. Uh, and he's been traded an awful lot. Why is that? You know, I, I think he he's a great player, Jay. I think the one thing that I definitely want to address immediately is I think there's kind of been an unfair narrative of, all right, well, he's been traded now for the third time. Maybe this guy isn't a great teammate, and that really couldn't be further from the truth. This is one of my all-time favorite players I've ever worked with. Uh, it was really a result of a lot of other decisions. But when you talk about the epitome of a great teammate – coming to work, explosive playmaker, attention to detail in the meetings, translating it to the grass, uh, just a consistent demeanor. I love this guy. And, you know, any of those narratives out there couldn't be further from the truth, but it's a result of a lot of tough decisions that we've really had to make organizationally as a whole this offseason, Jay, losing a lot of great players that have been instrumental in our success. And Brandon is one of those guys as well. But it's also a reflection of the confidence that we do have in, in some other players on our roster. Yeah, look, you have the 52nd pick of the draft as the first pick you have, right? Yes, so, sir. So day one, what do you got going on? You know, I was, uh, you know, I, I might have a couple beers and hang out and watch it just like you'll be at your house. I mean, no, nah, it's, uh, you're sitting here looking at draft central right now, probably driving myself crazy watching those first 32 go off the board. And then you'll be anxiously awaiting uh, as 20 picks go by or 19 in the, in the second round before we can go. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.